Welcome to a short reflection on the Feast of Christ the King, 34th and last Sunday of the year. Dear friends, on the last Sunday of the liturgical year, the Church celebrates the Feast of Christ the King. From the dawn of the civilization, kings have arisen who have dreamed of possessing a whole world dominion, a universal kingdom that would last forever. But here we have a king who is remarkably different from the kings of the earth. He came to serve all, even his enemies. He was king, the God-man, with a vulnerable human nature and at the same time a person all-powerful. To all intents and purposes, Christ on the cross was a perfect picture of defeat. In the Gospel today, Jesus demonstrates how he is a Messiah and king by granting salvation to a believing criminal merely for the asking. In the first reading, we hear how David became the leader of his people, but he recognizes that God alone is the true king of Israel. In the second reading, we have a marvelous picture of Christ. Many in today's democratic setup will discover that the title king does not register too well. Hence, they feel that a better image of today's feast is achieved by presenting it as the feast of Christ the leader. Jesus certainly knew the oppressive nature of secular kings and in contrast to them, he connected his role as king to humble service and commanded his followers to be servants as well. In fact, there are two highly contrasting pictures of Jesus as King given in the readings today. There is the highly triumphant picture given in the second reading from the letter to the Colossians. St. Paul tells the Colossians how grateful they ought to be to God for having made them Christians and citizens of Christ's kingdom. He then goes on to describe what Christ is to them as he is to us. Jesus is the image of the unseen God and the firstborn of all creation, for in him were created all things. God wanted all perfection to be found in him and all things to be reconciled through him when he made peace by his death on the cross. The institution of the Feast of the Kingship of Christ was intended to be a rallying call to all Christians to acknowledge the sovereignty of Christ not only over Christians but also on all creation. In the first reading we have David anointed king of Israel by Samuel the prophet. But Saul, though sidelined by God already, refuses to step aside. This led to a prolonged struggle between them and finally ends when St. Paul took his own life in a battle with the Philistines. With Saul dead, all the tribes come to David in Hebron. God now sends David to Hebron and there he draws his inspiration from the glory days of Israel's origins. In the Gospel, we are given a very different picture indeed. Twice in the passage, Jesus is referred to as a king of the Jews. Two other times, he is called the Messiah. All these references are directed to Jesus as he hung on the cross and they are all made in mockery of him. Here we are presented with a man being executed in shame, bleeding and battered on a cross, one of the cruelest and degrading punishments ever devised. Over his head are the mocking words, this is the king of the Jews. To every human imagination, he does not look like a king. Dear friends, during his life, Jesus preached the kingdom of God and openly told the disciples to seek first the kingdom of God and his righteousness. It means we must put God first in our lives. It means we must come under the rule of this God, a King, Jesus Christ. He alone is King of kings and Lord of lords. He called his disciples not servants, but friends, and bestowing on them a share in his priesthood and kingship. 
Though he died unlike other kings, he died willingly to save his people and his death was not a result of a battle lost or a plan gone twisted, but of a glorious victory planned before the world began. He rose in glory and went to his heavenly coronation. Jesus knew perfectly well the oppressive nature of secular kings and in contrast to them he connected his role as king to humble service and commanded his followers to be servants as well confirming the title publicly and solemnly proclaimed that all power was given him in heaven and on the earth today we are honoring jesus the king who humbled himself in order to raise us up to the status of the sons of god a king who suffered the cruelest of deaths so that we could have an unending life of happiness when we leave this earth jesus said the kingdom of god is in your midst luke 17 21 and this is a spiritual aspect of the kingdom of god which is much more important than its exterior and corporeal aspects the father entrusted to his son the mission of giving eternal life to man loving him even unto the supreme sacrifice and at the same time conferring on him the power of judgment from the moment he became son of man like us in every way the gospel insists upon the universal royalty of christ the judge with the magnificent parable of the final judgment the images are simple the language is common but the message is extremely important dear friends it is the truth in our ultimate destiny and on the criteria with which we all be valued wishing you all very happy feast of christ the king may god bless all of us amen